Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Mob Belislam. Um, I am currently a director within the Security Institute, uh, which is one of the largest professional bodies for security professionals. Um, I'm also a civil servant, full time, that's my day job. Um, I work for a government digital service as head of transformation security. Um, the topic I wanted to talk about uh, is based on the fact that I spent a lot of time doing a lot of different roles within the security industry and I wanted to give something back to the audience about how my journey went, what the difficulties I've, I found, what challenges I found and then why I moved on. Um, it's quite interesting, I think Stu's to, uh, converse, um, talk, talk was quite informative for us because I remember going on, a uh, on, a um, on an event with him and I was sat in the, in the seat and I'm like, I don't understand engineering but he's the expert and I was sat next to him I'm thinking, hang on a second, what am I going to be able to give back to the audience if I don't understand engineering myself? So, by my background, I've not done engineering before, so I couldn't really talk about engineering at that time, so it's quite, quite useful, this, this talk in the same space. Um, so, this is my view and the stuff that we're doing in the Security Institute and the research we're doing in, in the Institute. Um, one of the things I found when I was working as a security architect is I didn't know what my identity was. I struggled with that identity a lot. Um, and then I'll look, go into about what we did, what we really should be doing, um, and why I want to, do, and in the end, move on to something different. So this is my view uh, of what security architecture is. I suppose there are lots of definitions out there. Uh, you can Google all of these. Um, and my view is we don't hold the key to the kingdom. And, you know, we're not, we shouldn't be part of the Ministry of Nowhere. We say no to everybody. We can't do anything. We, you know, that's the common view of security architects. Um, and we're not magical people, so we don't know everything. Um, there's two definitions in there from uh, NCAC and NIST. I, I mean, you can read that. Uh, but as I said, there's tons of... of sorry, I'm just going to move this. It's making a lot of noise. There's tons of... Um, definitions on what security architect is. Um, but NCSE's one is practice of designing computer systems to achieve a security goal or security goals. Um, that's the one that I try and use because it's the shortest and simplest one. Um, so there, there's tons and tons of security architects, tons and tons of names on it. Um, so you've got, you can call yourself an enterprise security architect. Uh, you can call yourself a SABS security architect. And the list keeps on going. And one thing I found is there is no one, de one type of security architect. There's multiple facets of security architect based on your skill set. Um, and that itself is a challenge because when you see a job advert, you see a, uh, or when you're looking for a security person, you uh, advertise a security architect. You don't know what type of security architect you may need and you end up with the wrong, wrong person because the ad advert is not correct. Right? So one of the things I struggled when I first started in my security architecture career um, was how complex everything was. Um, security architect's role is to translate a lot of things, in my opinion. Um, we take information from somebody else, or a standard or, or a policy, and we interpret it for our colleagues to go and implement uh, from a design perspective. Now, this is just an example of a research that was done by PwC and uh, one of the government departments. Um, the relationship is quite clear. So everything in orange is number of standards within one organization or a policy. And then if you can see, if you have to become an expert or very knowledgeable in everything in the blue organization bit, it's going to take your time. Then you've got dependencies as well. So it's very difficult to navigate between standards, governance, um, people and various other parts of, of, of the organization because based on the policies and stuff like that. There's also external dependencies as well. So some organizations will follow uh, 27001, but 27001 has multiple dependencies. If you follow NIST frameworks, NIST frameworks also has multiple dependencies. So it's quite a challenge. So your knowledge of your domain uh, or your specialism is very important. But at the same time, you'll never get to the point where you understand every single domain. You just probably get a, a feel for some of it. One of the, my bugbears has always been language. 
I think, I think we should have an ISO standard for security lang language because we tend to call something the same thing as something else. So, and we tend to use the wrong words for the wrong uh, context as well. So some standards talk about cyber security and the definition of cyber is one thing and then you go to another standard and cyber means something else. Uh, and and it's, it goes across the whole of our profession. And also the context of those standards, policy, uh, guidances and stuff like that is kind of challenging. So if you don't apply it in the right context, then you end up doing the wrong thing and you dive, driving the business forward in the wrong, wrong way. Um, and then the other thing is we try and follow what the business wants. We, let's face it, we're security people, but business comes first. Business is there to make money or if you're in the civil service, to provide a service for the uh, for, uh, population. So it's very hard for them to choose the standards, guidances and policies. So if we don't know how to navigate ourselves through those kind of things, we can advise them on how and what they should be choosing and what they shouldn't be doing. So broadly speaking, um, security architecture kind of fits within, or security roles, I suppose, fits in those three kind of categories, consulting, delivery, and assurance. Um, and I suppose most of the roles that I've come across and colleagues I've worked with sit within the consulting and assurance side, mainly in the assurance side. Um, that's based on my work I've done, the research I've done in that space. Um, now there is a shift towards um, outcomes-based delivery. Um, it's also li linked to business needs, people understanding what the user wants. Uh, there's a big shift in that, so user design and stuff like that is very important now. Um, and then the other thing is security is everybody's responsibility. We hear that all the time, but it's never in everybody's job description. It's only in the security person's job description. You can, you, you know, the, one of the things we have to change is our perception of, of HR and how they can help in a, um, transferring responsibility to all our colleagues in, in the organization, whichever one we're in. So I see that in the assurance and, and, and the consulting side, that these five types of, uh, four types of um, accountabilities and the design side of things or delivery side of things, the, the uh, one as well. So security can be an oversight role. So security roles can be where you go and oversee somebody's work, um, provide them guidance as a, so for example, if you're a customer versus um, client relationship, your customer will set the requirements and you will go and deliver them. Um, so and alternatively, group, group security, um, overseeing, I would say regional security people. And then there's regulation, security regulations as well. So security regulation um, is when one side regulates the other side through re uh, rules and uh, laws and regulations and such. Um, so for example, financial laws, somebody decided, for, uh, the FCA decided some, uh, a new regulation on something and you have to deliver against it. So it's a com compliance thing. Inspections, there's security inspections, a lot of roles sit within that space. Um, so it's one side inspecting another side. So first line, second line activity within the same organization but going back to the same reporting um, person. So for example, if you're going back to the group CEO or the uh, chief exec of something else. So that's internal kind of ins inspections. Um, then you've got scrutiny uh, type of roles as well. Um, this basically involves going out and getting an independent audit. So the likes of PwC, Deloitte and stuff like that. You're asking them to come and health check your environment, saying if it's secure and stuff like that. So it's just a tick box exercise in my opinion. Um, and then the last one, which is, doesn't sit within the, in the Venn diagram, um, within the assurance and the consulting side, is in the delivery side. Um, it's basically the people that do the real work uh, and we really forget about them. So we spend so much time on all the other four, doing all the assurance, all the consulting, all the other activities that we forget that those people have to do the work. So the, 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 there is a shift now in the security architecture community of moving people from the assurance side into the delivery side so that they can deliver security stuff, so for example, patch services and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's a never ending job in, and it's a thank, thankless job as well in, in working in delivery. It's easier to point and laugh um, than it is to do the work. Um, so most security architects end up in 
non deliverable as a, in, in, from an accountability perspective, so it's easy for them to say, yeah, I'm, I'm going to, I need you to do this, and not be able to help them and guide them on how they should be delivering that. Um, most get into, hired into the wrong kind of roles. Um, so I got hired as a network security architect, but I was asked to do application security. I have no idea what application security is, um, other than the basic stuff. Um, I did Java in 1999, and in 2000 I gave it up because I was rubbish at it. So I'm not going to be an expert in that space, but I'm asked to do those kind of things. Um, so in the end, I just thought, sorry, I'm not going to move that, move on with that kind of role. Um, they also have become very diluted as well. So job specs I've seen in the last 10 years, um, you've got lots of different skill sets, lots of things that recruitment agencies want, um, and basically you are doing every single type of security architecture role as opposed to every single type of specialism. Um, and then there are other problems as well when we do go in as a security architect, the organization doesn't know what standard to choose and they choose every single one under the sun or compliance will last for one, regulators will last for one, internal people will decide we want to do something else and all of a sudden all they're doing is ticking boxes instead of doing any real work. So security uh, architecture dimensions, um, in my view, is about solving business problems. Um, it's about following one security architecture framework, if you can. Um, it's part of business architecture. Security should not sit on its own. It shouldn't be siloed. Um, that's where you get the ministry of no, because everybody goes to them for approval when they don't need approval from them all the time. Um, it's not all about theory. It's also about practical, practical experiences as well. Um, you can, um, I, I always use the example of, of being a pilot or a doctor. Um, you know, you have to be, you have to fly a plane for a period of time before you can actually take to the cockpit. Um, and again, security is no different. So we want people with practical experience, whether it's in technology or other areas, to have done something because then it's easier for them to explain it to colleagues that are delivering activities. Um, finding solutions and not problems. Um, that's one of the challenges I faced when I first started my career. Um, I was always going to say, no, you can't do this, and then I'd just walk away. And then they'd ask me, what can I do? I like, that's not my job, that's your job to fix it, figure it out. So I've been guilty of that myself, but you know, it's one of those things you learn from it. Um, now, if, I, if a question comes towards me, I have to give two, two responses back with two options of some, somebody doing something. I'm also being integrated and embedded. It's one of those things that you want to uh, try and achieve. Um, I've put a, a quote in there for myself. Um, so solving the Rubik's Cube is hard. However, if you know the common moves, it's a lot easier. So security is no different. You know, trying to f if you don't understand the different types of moves within the Rubik's Cube, you'll never solve it. But if you learn the different activities, you'll, you'll get that uh, in, in a matter of time. Uh, my niece is doing that, so that's why um, I've been trying to teach her how to solve it. Um, so why did I want another type of role? So manage supplies, the security architecture. So I, supply, I started, I, I joined as a security architect and I was told, told go and manage a supplier to make sure they do, do these risk assessments and all that. So I don't mind doing that. That's one of the areas I've learned security. But I couldn't just manage supplies. I wasn't able to draw any pretty pictures. I wasn't doing, like, able to do anything. I was just going and asking them to do the work. Um, I, started, I was asked to review application code. Um, I was following standards. I was asked to follow st standards and frameworks blindly um, with no reasons. Um, nobody gave me a reason why I had to f do something. So I understand PCI DSS works in certain areas, but when I'm in government and I don't have any, any reason to pay customers, claimants, or anything, why do I have to follow PCI DSS as an example? So it's those kind of conversations I was having that really got me frustrated. Um, and then <laughs> the best one was, uh, when I moved from assurance to delivery, um, I was told I'm not a security person. I'm, a, I'm just a technical person. So all of a sudden, I'm just not, I can't call myself a security because security is only for assurance and consulting type of people. And then it also became a management overhead. I've, um, I believe we all have high standards. Um, and I will, when you manage a team, you want the best colleagues to work with you and support you. And it was very hard to find colleagues with the same sort of principles and, and values and, 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 and talent as well. So in the end, I just gave up and I just thought I'm not going to be able to find colleagues in the civil service. Private sector it might be different, but civil service is quite hard. 
Um, and ultimately, I was seen as a uh, jack of all trade, master of none. Um, but I preferred delivery because I could do some work for a change. So what's next? Um, so Security Institute is doing a lot of research now. Um, and what we're trying to do is doing a lot of work around the convergence piece. Um, and to help colleagues in, in the security community to better themselves. Um, so we've set up a, a group called uh, Cyber and Convergence Specialist Interest Group. Uh, it's going to be the first year that we run it, and it's going to be for all our members. But we're also working with um, a, a lot of professional bodies within the security industry. And what we are trying to do is get other colleagues from other parts of uh, other professional bodies. If you're a member of, let's say, BCS, you can come to our events. It's not that it's limited to just our kind of um, professional uh, members. So we are opening it up a bit more. We're trying to change it a bit around because everybody's very insular with information and they don't want to share it. We're doing a lot of research around career progression. So there's a piece of work that I really want to do about how somebody could start as an apprentice, which is where, what I was when I started, and move, the, move themselves to uh, in a security career, uh, wherever they want to end up in. Um, and we're working with various professional bodies to develop that. Um, convergence in the, in the past was physical security versus information security, now known as cyber. Um, but I think there's a lot of specialism that could be converged as well. So personnel security, operational technology security, there's various other things. So we want to converge all type of knowledge and experience and allow the members to benefit from that. Um, and as, as on the bottom, there is conversion between professional bodies. Uh, we're part of the uh, Security Cyber Alliance, which is one of the good things that we're doing across the professional uh, body. Um, and then we are going to start publishing um, how-to guides as well, just f for free, no cost, just so that people can um, get the information. The first one we're doing is how to hire the right security person. And the answer is quite simple. You know what you're asking. And we are, we are working with the professional bodies to help members hire the right people. So if, the, if for example, uh, Institute of, uh, of Directors, um, somebody for, a director wants to hire somebody, then they've got guidance and they know where to go to get the information and support, uh, providing free services and stuff like that. Um, all research will be published, uh, allowing um, others to take it forward. So there's the, the, the diagram with all the standards on it, um, we will publish that to allow people to then follow things across. So if you, front, if you start on 27,001, you know what the, all the dependencies are, what, the, what other standards relate to it, and all that kind of stuff. So we want to make that available for free, and then that would allow people to take that forward a bit further. So thank you very much. I just left you a quote from Einstein. Obviously, he's a very clever man. Thank you. Thank you. Very thank much you. Indeed. Thank Interesting insight into the role of a security architect. I'm glad I'm not one of those. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.